All right, well, we can kind of all jointly facilitate today. It's a kind of a known group of folks. Here are the minutes. I think I am recording. Okay. Um, so hi, everybody. Welcome to January 6th, 2021, the DNI recruit meeting. Um, so if you could please add yourself to the list, tell us how you're doing today. Elizabeth, do you want to go through people? And like in the other meetings, we've been just saying how we've been feeling, like, because we're all back, you know? Oops. Sure, yeah, no problem. Um, so on my screen, Matt Snell is very number one. So Matt, how are you? How are you doing? Oh man, <clears throat> I should stop coming to the meeting so early. <laughs> I, I'm doing just fine. Um, I, I'm enjoying, everybody seems to be enjoying Tucker on the log over there if you haven't seen him yet. But um, other than that, having a really good time today. Awesome. And Matt G, you are next on my list. Right on. It's good to see everybody. Happy 2021. Um, doing doing pretty well. Starting to get back into the swing of things. So, it takes it takes a few days or weeks, <laughs> hopefully not months. And Amy, how are you? Sorry, I was clicking and typing in the other window. Everything's good. It's hard getting back to work after two weeks off, but. Solid Agreed. Food. Just a little noisy <laughs> in the background with chickens. And Vinod, how are you feeling today? Hello, everyone. I had a good night's sleep, so feeling very energetic. <laughs> That's a pretty good thing. Yeah. All right, Emily, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Finally looked at the results from Georgia's runoff election. So my day just went a lot better. <laughs> Is the second one done? Is it official? The Ossoff one? In Georgia? I don't know. I don't think it's official, but I think it's pretty clear. I think it's like almost like 98%. I think they have to wait for some like military votes to come in and, and other yeah. mail-in to make it official, but I think it's pretty close gotcha. to being. Cool. Sala, how are you doing? Um, well, I'm still in a green room and I got a green sweater. <laughs> so, but yeah, so, so I guess a new decade um, it's very, very hard to change 2020 and, and put a one there. Although I, the year itself was awful, but like it's well rounded 2020. I'm going to miss that. So, how's everyone doing? <laughs> All right. Well, I agree on the 2020. It was kind of nice. And <laughs> now it's like the 21. Just messes it all up. <laughs> yeah. Nicole, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I would say it was a good experience for everyone. Yep. Uh, Nicole, how are you feeling today? Good morning. Um, I am doing pretty good. I loved what you said, um, Elizabeth, in, in, um, in the lineup, uh, feeling hopeful, um, liked uh, and really in, liking what's coming out of Georgia, um, and uh, helpful for our uh, new year ahead. So, um, got a pretty good night's sleep. Uh, we're building out our uh, garage, um, at least the third car uh, area, into a, an at home. Um, gym or workout area. So uh, feeling, feeling hopeful. Nice. <laughs> do you have, do you have the equipment, the gym equipment already, or is um, this TBD? Not yet. We're, we're okay. getting a Peloton. We're one of those that's getting a Peloton. Um, yep. But I'm also hoping we're getting one of those that sw the screen swivels. And so I want to do like yoga and stretching. And so 
Peloton, but other stuff too. So um, nice. Yeah, I'm getting some carpet. It's like U of O ducks, and so I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling good. So right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is very exciting. I love it. <laughs> we can all come hang out now at the, at the, the Houston gym. Yay! Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, awesome. So we'd we'll love to have you all over. <laughs> On slip Patty, you're getting some advice from Amy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got rid of the oh. furniture. It's just a gym in there now. The, oh, wow. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> cool. Um, so our, our meetings, uh, at least in the other chaos working groups, they've been a little bit short as we've kind of gotten our bearings and kind of set things forward. But that's for this first week is what I'm, I guess, um, what I'm saying. So I put a few things in the agenda. Um, we can do these in any order. Um, so there was a recent uh, issue put forward by King with respect to language diversity, offering a couple new metric ideas. One with was, I think it would essentially be two metrics around language. I think one was like speaking and um, reading maybe. I kind of forget. But anyway, he had broken it down into a couple different metrics. So we can talk about that. Um, and I thought it was a nice idea. Um, in uh, the DNI working group, we could also just take a look at issues and PRs. We've done this in the past and just try to work some of these down. I think there's 20 some odd standing issues right now. I don't know if there's any open PRs. I don't have it in front of me. Um, we could also take a look at that and try to reduce that set just a little bit, um, talk through those. And then the last, I think every working group should maybe do this a little bit is, is goal setting. Um, you know, so different working groups have uh, different things they're trying to accomplish. Um, all the working groups, I think, are continuing to work on metrics and the advancement of metrics. Um, the DNI working group has uh, the DNI badging program associated with it. So there's kind of, you know, developing the metrics and getting the metrics into practice. So do we just want to, you know, kind of stay the course as to what we did in 2020? Are there new things that we want to think about? Um, I, you know, just kind of a brainstorming session if there's things that are on people's mind. So is there any particular order that people want to work through this, through this list? No. Not, nothing in particular. Um, all right. <laughs> Anybody want to add anything to the list that I might have, that might not be on here? All right. Um, well, in that case, let's let's start just at the top with uh, language diversity, and I can share my screen here. Um, so uh, King had recommended. Uh, couple different ways that we could think about language diversity. Um, do we, I, I, I should have looked, but do we have um, any metrics right now dedicated to language that have been released? Does anybody know? Not unless you want to include our accessibility, um, accountability, those metrics. Oh, the, the documentation kind of, stuff? Yeah, they kind of touch on it. Okay. Um, do people have maybe thoughts as you read this? The issue that we have here with these kind of constitute a new way of thinking? Is this worth? Sorry, I'm just reading it now. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll yeah. be quiet. Oh, no, no worries. Yeah, and I was actually thinking more of the inclusive naming and divisive language and everything else we've been going through when this topic was on there. So, yeah, I mean, most um, languages I think used is English within mm -hmm. the others translated or able to be, you know, selected from a drop down. Mm -hmm. um, uh I'm looking at the sheet in which in the under the communication inclusivity section, we have a listening and a speaking in progress. 
So we do have yes. listening and speaking. Yes. So it's in progress. I don't know the status of the, and I don't find any links or anything in that sheet. Okay. Um. Yes, Allah. Sorry. Um. I just wanted to point out that um, a novel way to explore uh, language um, inclusivity is to say that um, like sign language um, is used to include, um, um, you know, people who find it the language appropriate to use as opposed to thinking of it as a accommodation or an accessibility, which you know, we, we've seen how those, um, you know, people want and people try, but it's a, it's a separate thing from, from actually uh, saying that it's the communication method. Um, and um, I kind of wonder if we can uh, explore the idea of easy read as a variant of given languages that Say that is, again, Sala. That uh, what would be a variant? Easy read. Okay. Uh, you know, um, um, like um, this is this is something that comes out uh, of um, I can't remember the name, but uh, some some autism um, um, organizations out there, um, you know, self-organized, basically create PDFs with plain um, read and easy read, um, and it's basically. Um, it's not looking at it as making it accommodating this ability, but rather that people on the spectrum, um, they have a different way to work with images uh, that allows them to communicate a lot more meaning and remember that meaning. Um, and so just, just, you know, I wanted to bring it up here that we might think of language as an accessibility form. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can think of accessibility as a this slash ability um, umbrella, as opposed to um, the leading narrative of framing it as a, you know, accommodation. Um, but, you know, at the very least, if we're going to talk about um, different formats for language as opposed to just written, um, then we can also explore the idea of easier read English versus plain read or uh, plain English. Right. Okay. So people have comments on what Sala brought forward here? Sala, would this be different then? then um, so in the documentation accessibility metric, it does talk about a little bit about like learning flexibility. It says documentation is accessible to people with various cognitive approaches sensory differences and neurodiversity. Would that be then um, related to la language it, as far as you're, like I'm, I'm just trying to see where that matches up with what we have out there already. If we can add on like a filter or, or build on the one that we already have started. So um, I, I think it relates to trying to figure out how, 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 to, how to frame um, um, something that um, people are just not sure how to frame, I think. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like, I'm sure there are people out there who have managed to uh, make accessible um, uh, community um, um, communication and collaboration. Um, but I think if we're thinking mainstream adoption, um, it matters how it is framed. Um, and as far as accessibility is concerned, unfortunately, it seems to only matter when there are lawsuits. And I, I have like, that and there's evidence of that in, in the web's history. And um, so, so I'm just thinking that we could be proactive and, and uh, we could kind of try to reimagine how we're saying things in such a way that it becomes yeah, it's about inclusivity. It's not about, um, you know, what most people think is inclusivity, but uh, those who, you know, count beans basically say, uh, no, there is no lawsuit, so why should we?
Elizabeth, are you kind of talking about, so this is the documentation accessibility. Yeah. And this is a metric, just so folks know, it's currently under review, I think, at least, or it's gonna be part of the next release. And so, and I think this is Amy, what you were talking about as well, that there are already things in place that maybe to Elizabeth's point um, can draw in what King has brought forward. Is that right? Without developing another metric, Elizabeth, is that right? I mean, based on, based on the way we have defined accessibility in that, mm -hmm. um, I think that it fits. You know, how does the documentation accommodate different users? I think we could maybe um, build out that to include different languages. I don't know if that is something people will, um, to Sala's point, you know, accessibility kind of has its own um, context around it that, um, as he said, you know, only, only gets visibility if there's an issue. Um, so I don't know how we want to handle that, but um, okay. according to our definition, I think that the translation in different languages, having that available would fit there. Okay. But it doesn't, it doesn't touch on the, the um, chatting, the actual like real time interaction, mm -hmm. the yeah. voice, you know, so um, I don't know what we're going to do that, but. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Um, so do you have a, at least a, an approximate path forward, Elizabeth? I mean, we don't have to solve this now. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like whatever whatever the group wants to do uh, is totally, I don't have super strong feelings about it either way. If we put okay. it in its own thing, um, I don't know. Whatever everybody wants is totally cool with me. So to, to Vinod's point too, this is the metrics sheet and Vinod had brought up what's here in rows 29 and 30 that we have talked about listening and speaking. They're in progress, <laughs> mysteriously nowhere. <laughs> so they're in progress in our minds. Um, uh, so maybe we could just continue to talk about this. We don't have to solve it now, but think about how um, language to King's point, how language diversity with respect to writing and seeing and saying and listening could be captured um, either with these two or captured um, as part of documentation accessible. Think about, maybe think about how we, we kind of fit these. It feels like fitting puzzle pieces together as to not overload with just too many metrics that kind of confuse the issue, but also I'm doing doing justice to the things that King's trying to draw forward. Does that make sense? All right. It does to me. I also, I just want to say, I think that this is a very, I, I really like the idea of the metric of having a measurement somewhat of, of what languages are available to the community. Um, I think that's a, a very good idea. So double thumbs up from me personally wherever we decide to put it. So yes, kind of figuring out how that fits with what we have and what we kind of have on the agenda. Okay, um, I'm gonna make a comment in the, the issue. Oh, gotcha, um, okay. <clears throat> then I'll stop my, uh, yeah, I've, I started to write under language diversity. Oh, in the yeah. notes. You, yeah, I'll, I'll make a comment to King in the issue itself. Oh, perfect. on GitHub. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Okay, great. Um, Excellent. Elizabeth, could you lead the next issue on the, I'll do the issue sure. on the agenda. If I can find my tab, here we go. The next issue is issues and PRs. Maybe we could start to work a few of these down. What do we think about that? Are we, are we good with that? But want to do that? I'd like to try and personally, I want to do goals first because I feel like we're more into that space right now. And um, the issues in PRs might take a long time. I just want to make sure that we get through goals too. Um, I had some things to talk about with that, but. Yeah, I'm good with that too, for sure. Um, 
Matt Snell, you want to go ahead and, and give us your thoughts on the badging goals? Yeah, so for badging, I think it worked really well that we uh, that we put together uh, kind of a, a thing before the break, we, we talked a little bit about it, but then we kind of solidified more of these things. Um, it looks like by um, lazy consensus of the group for the most part, but we have a release for the next kind of badging iteration, uh, the iteration of badging content about a month after the metrics release, so at the end of March. And the goals for the year 2021, some of these brought up by the community uh, and the other ones solidified by the community are, uh, we wanna work on project badging by the end of the year and at least get something started with that so that we have project and event badging, uh, updating the bots, optimizing the workflow. So we we're working on that in the next few days, Asta and I are for putting together a, a more solid hosting system for the bots and virtual events, uh, as well as in-person events, making sure that the metrics actually reflect what happens when, when it comes to diversity and inclusion at those events or in, in the future projects as well. Uh, we, we always take suggestions and uh, Ruth brought up a good question was, do we need a design perspective? Do we want someone who is a, who's kind of closer to the UX space to come in and look at our workflow and say, how does this look as an applicant? How does this look as a reviewer? Things like that. So this is just kind of, this is just kind of the rundown of what we talked about in the previous meeting for badging. Uh, and I think it would be good to have something like that for the diversity and inclusion meeting too, to just have kind of a roadmap that we can say, this is what we want to get done this year and make, keep it realistic, you know? What are your thoughts on that? I agree. That's my thought. Is that I agree? <laughs> I can facilitate um, this part if you want. Pick up. Yeah, that'd be great. Short-term type things and one or two long-term things, things we can get accomplished if anyone has any. Yeah, we can talk about our goals for like the metrics release maybe the next couple months. So I had, um, at least from a short-term goal perspective, um, we have been doing translations on the metric releases <laughs> per the comments about uh, different languages. And so we have translated the metrics into Chinese and into Spanish. It's not full coverage on all the metrics right now, but it the translations were done to kind of get say 90% of the work done. And we need to probably build a process by which we can um, work with folks who can do Chinese translations in the community or help with Spanish translations for any minor changes that we might have to a metric. So for example, like what Elizabeth brought forward, say with documentation accessibility, if we include something like a statement or a filter regarding language, we would need somebody to help with translating, you know, just that bullet point, right? Um, and as we release new metrics, we would need help with the translation of those new metrics for future releases. Um, so, I don't know if it's a short-term goal or a long-term goal, um, but starting to build a process by which we can request support and capture that uh, work for translating the metrics. Does that make sense? And I think DNI seems like a very reasonable place <laughs> to, to think about that work. Okay, that's um, that's something that we can focus on in the next uh, biometrics release. Really, uh, that's important to do by the metrics release. Uh, do we have any more goals for the metrics release that people would like to bring up? I, I guess other than release the metrics. I have an unrelated question. 
Yeah. Um, in the past, did we set uh, specific goals or have specific conversations about like Google Summer of Code and what we want those students to do if we want to participate, how that looks? Is that something we did in this group or in every working group or how did that how did that roll out? Not necessarily because a lot of the Google Summer of Code was focused on software development. And so like coming out of the working groups, not so much, but um, with respect to DNI, we talked about connection with Outreachy. And so that the conversation really kind of originated in uh, head life here. Gotcha. Is that something we want to put on our, our goals for next year is to continue that program and figure out what that looks like for 21? I think so. And um, kind of having been through the program before, we right now financially, we couldn't support an outreachy student because I think it's say $6,500 and our current bank account is 5,500. But um, kind of being going through the process before, um, I learned that you can request to participate and also indicate that you don't have the money to support a student and or a, a mentee. Um, and there are organizations who contribute to Outreachy to help support the communities who can't financially support mentees themselves. So I, I think we should. I think that's a really great idea. I really liked the program. I think what Outreachy does is amazing. I think we had awesome people participating. Um, and even if we can't do a full support, I think it's worth, worth doing that. That's really helpful context. Thanks, Matt. Hi, Tola. Hi, Tola. Hi, everyone. Glad to be back. Great to see you. You might Great want to, to hear you. about this translation thing that, that Matt just talked about. You said, Matt, that we have metrics in Chinese and Spanish now? Yep. So one of our goals is to, I guess it's probably just a long-term goal or is to continue, continually release all of our metrics in Chinese and Spanish, at least for now. We could think about other languages too, um, but just as part of that translation, we're gonna need to build a process that we can continue to update the translations and provide new translations. And I'm kind of, sometimes I kind of look at you, Kevin, on this as to not to design the process, but what would be a process that's tenable for you to request that feedback. Don't have to solve it now, but. It is it is something I've been thinking about. Uh, it's a complex issue for uh, uh, going forward, so. Are we using any tool to translate or is it like manual translation? The, the first 90% of the translation was something that um, was paid for out of a grant. So we were able to, to essentially fund that initial work um, and that was manual translation with a translating company. And then going forward, I think the, the thought was just continue to rely on people to help in that translation process. I don't know how good um, for for a Chinese translation, I can like uh, think of an idea to propose it to the, the China working group that uh, they can look after that section if they have a volunteers or anything. At least propose in that meeting for if that I aspect. If I recall, Shoya, um, Elizabeth, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think Shoya had expressed interest in helping with the Chinese translation. I could be misremembering, but. No, I think you're right. I think actually there were a few people that stepped up and said, yeah, they would help. But this was, you know, again, like <laughs> six weeks ago. So I don't know, sounds good. Anyway. <laughs> Pre previously we had, we had talked about uh, 
uh, all of the full translations would be, we would just pay to have them done. And the, the part where we would need volunteers was just in, in maintaining the documents or editing those documents. I mean, I can, I, I, we have the money, particularly because we're not traveling, we have the money to do that. So, I mean, that would be a possibility, Kevin, to have the new metrics translated and then any edits to existing metrics to ask for community help. Awesome. And we can continue to work on the short-term goals and especially the long-term goals as we move forward in this year. So. I had a, um, <clears throat> a question that I'm not quite sure where it fits. Um, and it comes from more of an advocacy standpoint. Um, I, so is there a, um, um, and I use advocacy in terms of marketing, but I, I, a, um, maybe more of a, an organized way to uh, to increase visibility of all of the great work that goes on within the chaos project, whether that's through our social handle, through blogs, through um, speaking at the different virtual events, um, but a, a way, even if it's just a very light plan that, um, that we can put together Together. Um, and I, I'm not quite sure, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily fit within any one of the working groups per se, um, but it more communicates holistically what all of the, you know, what the Chaos Project is, what we do, what all of the different working groups um, I do what what we're accomplishing all of those different things and I, i'm not quite sure even where the question fits but i just wanted to put it out there oh and the podcast right the the podcast as well so i i like that um i think what what you're saying nicole is like a a even if it's lightweight at first, something that's a bit systematic in terms of how we um, get the word out. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do we have any people who have worked in marketing <laughs> before? <'Cause... laughs> Me. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, and technically I'm marketing, but I don't know how to market anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I currently um, run the marketing portion of the IEEE SA Open um, instantiation. So uh, if you guys need any help there, I can definitely help with that. Awesome. That'd be, that'd be great. It, yeah, I mean, I, it's something that I've been thinking about that, you know, is I think about it each time a new podcast is released. Right, and I'm like, wow, we should really have a concerted effort around how do we drive, you know, listeners? How do we drive folks to come listen to these different podcasts? Because we're putting out this great content. Um, and so that's when I typically think about it. <laughs> it's, um, but it would be great to have a concerted way or a, a systematic way to, to yeah, to, to do this. And, and it's it's all of these different things, right? Um, but yeah. So anyway, so I I, I would uh, it's it's something that I think that I'd like to take a goal around in this coming year. I uh, and so I, you know, if if there are folks who want to work on that with me, I think that'd be a fun thing to do. I think one of, of course the course you can count me in. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I, I think one of the one of the best ways to to get the chaos name out there is to provide a uh, uh, kind of a 
a usable version of the metrics that are uh, kind of interesting to a broad range of people. And I, I would, I guess, I would kind of compare what I'm what I'm thinking about is kind of similar to the like the OpenStack uh, diversity report, right? Like if every if every year Chaos released a kind of a, a state of the union report that could have multiple metrics looking at uh, like the Linux Foundation ecosystem, for example, uh, where we could showcase our metrics and and kind of say like this is a snapshot of what open source looks like right now uh, with Chaos metrics. Mm -hmm. Well, as Amy knows, we're we're really familiar with that yeah that yeah. Open stack diversity report so <laughs> yeah um that that's a great uh that's a great idea thank you um yeah i had you know interestingly enough i had not but that's a great idea i like that a lot Nicole, would it be okay to add this to the next community meeting as a topic of conversation? Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> I excuse me. One, <clears throat> go ahead. We've got about five minutes left. Just to know. So I, I did want to put. So in twenty twenty one. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know this. This was brought up in 2020. So the Ford Foundation has provided a grant to the, essentially to the Chaos Project to do a couple things. One is to take a look at our own DNI practices. So actually working with people who are external to the community to help us reflect on our own diversity and inclusion within the chaos project as a whole. Um, and so part of part of this is we have to identify people who can help in this process who are not necessarily like on this call, um, but that can look objectively at the chaos project and um, provide insight how we are doing as a project from a DNI perspective. Um, also, as part of that, is um, developing or at least providing methods to other communities by which they could do something similar without having to have external consultants come in and take a look at a project. So, um, you know, how would, uh, whatever, you know, how would any, any open source project go about reflecting on their own DNI practices um, internally and and be able to take action on, on on that information. So this is again, this is from the Ford Foundation, um, and I think the, the goal is kind of the the longer term goal is really the latter by developing methods and techniques by which um, open source communities can do that reflection. Uh, but as part as part of developing those those techniques, um, it's it's actually doing it with the Chaos Project. So this is, I think this is a goal. Yeah, I mean, Matt, yes, I think it is difficult. So I, I, but this is the hope is that people with an external perspective could help us through that difficulty. So I don't know if people have comments on that, but this is something for 2021. Mm -hmm. Maybe the way to word the goal is to work on any issues that are found from those outside resources. So the goal would be to not only um, essentially, for lack of a better word, like produce a report that reflects on the DNI practices of the community, but then action towards addressing any shortcomings? Well, it would be more of resolve any issues that are found in the report because we have no control and we're not participating in the generation of the report. That's correct. So the goal could, you know, needs to be worded that should any issues be found that we will work towards resolving. Gotcha. Any issues found. Yep. 
Agreed. And we are also um, from Ford, we're responsible for assembling the team that will do the review. So when we had talked to Michael Brennan at Ford, he had had a few recommendations of people who could, we should at least reach out to who could provide um, that may be able to help in this regard. But I, I like what you said too, Amy, as a goal being able to reflect on, on those recommendations. I think that's a, I mean, these are really good um, goals to, you know, to, to aim for. You know, they, they may be difficult, but gosh, they're, they're certainly um, worthwhile. Agreed. All right, uh, we are at 10 till the hour. Does anybody have any last comments to make before we head off? All good? Right on. This is great. Uh, again, as always, yeah. it's great to see everybody. Absolutely. Have an absolutely wonderful day, wonderful week. Whatever it might yes. be. Yes. Yes. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.